Continuing on what we learned in the previous video, that is the price basics. Now we'll look into more advanced aspects as to how to play around with this price and how to get some advanced metrics. That is the 50 day average, the 200 day average and how to get these in like one formula itself. So in this video, I'll be covering specifically the 50 day average price. And you'll see how we progress by first using a lot of data, a lot of rows, then compressing it to, let's say, 50 rows, then taking average of those 50 rows. And once I'm done with the long strength process, I'll reduce it to one formula so that you can get that price in an instant, right? Okay, so with that, let's start with it. The question is, I'm now interested in a 50 day average price for a particular stock. Now, how to get that? Let's think of this as a multi-step process since we already know the price basics. So as per basics to calculate the 50 day average price, what do we need? We need the price data for 50 trading days, right? So to get the price data for past 50 trading days, we can just use the formula we learned in the previous video. Google Finance, the ticker, what do we need? We need its price from today minus 50 to today. This is the time interval and we want it at a daily time frame. Okay, so this will give us price information. But if you notice the count here, if I just change this to count, I have only 33 rows here. Why is that? The problem here is the price is stored in every trading day. They don't add the weekends or Saturdays or Sundays or any market holidays in that count. So if you do today minus 50 till today, you'll only get the amount of trading days as happened in the past 50 calendar days. So to make this 3350, this way we will not get the 50 trading days that we require it to. So here your basic concept will fail. But however, we do have functions like query and sort that can give us this number to be 50 exact. Okay, so with this, we move to question 1.1. What should we do exactly to get the past 50 trading days from today? We combine query and sort functions and you will see how we get exact 50. Again, let's go back to the basics. First, let's get the information. Now we'll not only take the first like today minus 50, now we'll go to today minus 365. Like in the last calendar year, how many trading days were there? So we get a count 244 trading days were there. Now I'm only interested in the top 50, right? So first I sort the dates to make sure that the latest date is on the top, right? So the latest date I have is here. Latest date sorted one means sort column one. That is the date column. And then false means it is not ascending. It is descending, right? So once we do that, Okay, so now 14th February, 13th February, 12th February. So this is the, just the, you know, one day before data that I'm getting right now. Okay, so now we have the most recent dates sorted. Now, if I only restrict the amount of rows coming here to 50, my count will automatically become 50. How do we do that? We do that by using a query function. Now the query function, it goes like this. Whatever you had on the left hand side for sort, that will remain as it is. So that is your data frame or your data. In that data, we have two rows, sorry, two columns. In those two columns, we only want to restrict the amount of rows to 50. So we use a basic SQL command. If you don't know SQL, don't worry. It's practically English. So you can just understand it by just looking at this formula. We are just selecting column one, that is the date, column two, that is closing price, and we're limiting the data frame or the data set to 50 rows. So once you run that and press enter, you'll see that here we have 50 rows to be exact. And now our count of trading days is 50, right? So doing all this long process, now we have 50 trading days and now we need to calculate the average closing price. Now to do that, you can just, you know, take average of N21 to N70, which is the same, uh, same column that I highlighted a minute earlier, right? So you can do that, but that will, it will require a lot of space for every stock that you want to calculate and you'll only be able to calculate one stock at a time. What if we just put an average outside of this query function and only selected the second column on which we want to average, right? So in this way, we do it like that. We put, we wrap this query around an average function, right? And here we remove the column one. We are only interested in column two. So in column two, when we put it around an average function, we get the average price of 452.8. Similarly, we can calculate for 200 day average 
and just change the limit to 50 to 200. Now for the script that we are talking about, so the script we have is ITC, right? 50 day average price is 452 and 200 day average price is 447. And if I just copy this formula that I have here, place it here for 50 day average, right? So D8, D8 is this, and I change it here, right? And now if I copy paste this formula at the bottom, and now the D8, I can change it to D9. Now automatically I'll get the 50 day average price for SPI. So in one row, we can accumulate so much amounts of data just by moving around and using these four functions. We start with Google Finance, then sort it using a query, and then wrapping this query around in an average function just gives us the average price that we're looking for. Now just imagine you can put like 10, 15 stocks that you trade or you track every day or every week, and you can just get the 50 day average price, 200 day average price, 100 day average price in one table itself, right? I hope this was useful. In the next video, I'll talk about some more advanced concepts on how we can combine these particular functions to get more useful information out of it. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.